Have you ever been unhappy, depressed, wondering what this life is about, why you're feeling like everything is bouncing? This episode is going to address mental health and we are going to try and find out how spirituality can e enable us to have better mental health and uh, generally physical nice well-being. Wow. Hapo <laughs> mtakati. <laughs> Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us on this episode today. My name is Cynthia and I'm joined by my co-host Sean. Hey everyone, so my name is Sean Okot, but some people know me as Samar Darshi. So, okay, this topic here, uh, mental health, we hear it too much these days. Okay, like, it's good that people are more aware, but also, like, there's a way that um, people make light of it you have a small inconvenience and uh, now you're depressed. i'm depressed or something small you're just anxious about something that's going to happen and now you form it into a whole personality that oh you know i have anxiety i can't do this and that while it's true that there are people who suffer from these things um everything is is just like mixed up right yeah and i feel like it came it was more prominent when covid came because everyone was in the house, you have to deal with yourself, <laughs> your yeah. thoughts, your the people around you, and their, and their, you know, and their staff. Yeah. So, yeah, COVID really brought it out, and um, I think it's a it's the best time to speak about this. Only mm. that this time we are going to try and give you practical solutions and um, include spirituality in it, which is the essence of our life. Yeah. So, um, mental health. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, affecting how we think, feel, and we act. And um, mental illness is a condition which causes a serious disorder in a person's behavior or in a person's thinking. And there are many things that can bring about this disorder. There are so many. It could be your environment could be your diet it could be the situations you're going through maybe there's someone in a toxic relationship and they're wondering what this is so it could be a lot of things yeah true true so okay as much as like i was saying that many people make light out of mental health mm. as you've said that uh, it actually it actually affects us and i've seen it especially with the older generation like uh, let me say, like, people like people who are the age of my dad, like 60, 50, up, or, I think he keeps in the imagination, like, <laughs> ah, well, yeah. why, are you, why, are you, why are you stressing? Mm. But then, yeah, so the mind is a very powerful, powerful thing. The mind is, is where almost everything happens. It said, like, the beginning of every action starts in the mind. So if you're being unkind to yourself in the mind and you're allowing your mind to go wild and do all sorts of things, then you've already started the action of like degrading yourself and making your well-being go poorly. Because you see, like when someone is not feeling well, naturally they even start, they, they stop taking care of themselves. You can see like, especially like some people who are going through like severe depression, you d it shows on their face because it started in the mind and then now it's manifesting physically they're not taking care of themselves mm. they c they don't express like any emotion because they're completely drained yeah so um what i learned from spirituality is that the mind needs to be disciplined mm. yeah you see the way like we usually like we're so we're so strict on our bodies like i have to eat this kind of food mm. and i have to exercise the same way is the is the same way that the mind should be like taken care of just as we take care of our body yeah so yeah in spirituality there are a, a, a couple of practices but before we get into that i'll let you continue i, I think you wanted to say something before i continue all right um i just wanted to comment on that 
because most of the times we think we are spending time with the people who are close to us like your your sister your parent your partner but in the essence you're spending more time with yourself in the mind mm. so when you are not with these people like your family you are with yourself and so we have to be aware about the things we tell ourselves when no one is telling us anything so how we feed our mind is by literally existing what you're eating what you're seeing yeah. what you are listening to will feed your mind and i think that can bring us to the next point because if we feed ourselves with these negative things like um maybe music that has um dirty lyrics or just dark stuff then yeah. that is what our minds literally absorb if you're listening to someone who talks a lot of rubbish then clearly that is just what mm -hmm you will um you will feed off or yeah. we will give out yeah um have you watched a movie before you've slept and then yeah you dream about <laughs> you dream the exact about same it. thing yeah yes, exactly yes. so Actually, yeah, yeah yeah true yeah. so i i like what you said about the music especially because i've had so many conversations with my friends like sometimes your friend is going through it and they send you some music here like hey. yeah why are you listening <laughs> to <some> music <laughs> <laughs> Immediately yes. you listen to that music then now your mood has gone down. Mm. So like whatever we tune into like it greatly it affects the mind, yeah. Yes. So but okay so that leads us to the uh, this topic of depression. Yeah. Mm. So what causes depression? Cuz a lot of people right now claim and a lot of people are going through depression. Whatever the case like people are feeling down and they want to get out of it. So maybe like you can explain to us maybe you can try and see what depression is from a spiritual perspective or mm. medical whichever way because we are I'm not so much into the medical perspective <laughs> I think you know more about that Yeah that's a very important point disclaimer guys we are not we are not therapists we are speaking from our <laughs> experiences in case there's a therapist who's watching this and would like to give facts please just feel hit us up yes hit us please up. hit us up this would be very very instrumental for our society mm -hmm. so yes some of the causes of depression let me speak say for mothers mm. um postpartum depression maybe at this point you are used to being Wait, by well, uh, yourself umetumia tam kubwa sana what's that i've never heard of that postpartum depression is um this phase where women go through after giving birth so the reality has hit you yes you have a bundle of joy but it's a bundle of another things you never <laughs> thought they'd come with right oh, yeah, and yeah. so you're there with a small baby um i know of instances where even the mothers feel like they will throw away the baby because it's it's really a lot and other than that there could be a student in school who's trying to pass exams trying to do his best but masomo ingi and then there's mm. another person who's in a very toxic relationship a bad marriage and it's overwhelming them or you're just mm -hmm. literally with your your friends that do not feed you good energy so depression can come from a lot of things yeah. also from the foods we eat from the last episode we said the food we are what we eat so you might not be going through all these things but what you are feeding or what you're eating is really really um affecting you so there are so many things and yeah. then while you're in this phase you're depressed your mind is telling you to do things mm, it's yeah, telling yeah. you to eat more it's telling you to kill yourself unfortunately and um if you if you're feeling that way please hold on please hold on life it's a it's a bad day it's not a bad life yeah yeah so yeah i like what you've said about you know how the mind tells you so many things so in spiritual life we are told literally ignore the mind kabisa how ignore it like your mind is telling you this uh, it's like i only fit it but it's a way to lay to up it doesn't mean you have to react to Mm. everything that the mind demands actually it's it's described that a true yogi is one who can tolerate the mind's demands and the mind has so many demands like you've mentioned how 
sometimes you know when people are depressed they develop eating disorders because that's how they're consoling themselves yes so a simple example is like okay now you're feeling down and your mind is starting to tell you uh, go and eat this go and eat this so uh, a simple example is just ignore it ignore it like tolerate it rather the best word is to tolerate you know you have to you have to tolerate these thoughts not that like you're dwelling on them but mm-hmm. you're just tolerating them like that's something that across all religions is always emphasized patience yes. tolerance and just tolerate your own mind like okay you understand that right now you're feeling bad mm. but it doesn't mean that it's going to be a continuous thing and right now like you're feeling bad and as a result of that you feel like doing things which uh, eventually are not going to lead to a happy outcome okay so you have to tolerate the urge for for that for that period of time but now there's someone who's listening and they've been tolerating for years they've been told oh you know there's <laughs> light at the end of the tunnel but there's never that light it's been a dark phase for a very long time yeah now we wouldn't say in this society a lot of people are having that mind of a yogi yeah yeah okay yeah yeah there's the ideal and then there's where people are yeah okay i get that so i uh, what i know about depression and all of these other disorders there are people who have a physical any yani, chemical imbalance in their brain which causes them to feel like this for those people seek professional help but uh, for a vast number of people it's purely mental it's not on the physical state mm. so for such people generally speaking um, in spirituality you just have to start by practicing like it, it's you practice like you practice how to ignore the mind mm. or you practice how to tolerate the mind so maybe one time you'll fail but it's a continuous thing it's not something that happens immediately In a day. but you have to be at least conscious that okay my mind is trying to play tricks on me right now yeah yeah and you have to be conscious that okay if i do this then this will be the outcome so mm. for now let me just tolerate and eventually and another thing you mentioned which is good uh, is the people you are around yeah so if you are around people who are negative all the time if eventually you'll also become negative mm. you should never think that uh, me me don't take a superman i'm i'm the one who will save these people i'll infect <laughs> them with my positive vibes you, you'll drown uh, out <laughs> you yeah, sure. you'll be yes. infected yes so it's always good to like if if you're feeling a certain way mm. it's good to associate with someone who uplifts you listen to music which is uplifting or mm. eat food which is nice like don't go and start eating like s- so food. much junk food yeah yes. like eat good food like you know yes. things like fruits and stuff like that mm. so by associating with uh, people who are positive naturally you'll be infected and if these people actually care about you they'll want to keep you close cuz no mm. one would want to see you suffering yes so another thing is like with mental health people don't communicate communication is shida kubwa everywhere at work <laughs> at home in relationships <laughs> so people don't like to communicate about the struggles they are going through mm. but if you can communicate whatever issues you have and you associate with those people who are willing to like bring you out of it or rather are willing to share with you love and happiness mm. then you will eventually get out of it and whatever issues you have mm-hmm. for sure you'll find a solution but okay namaza hapo tu peke yako then you cannot be helped so that that brings us to another thing in spiritual life it says that one should inquire submissively so that means that you find someone who you're seeing okay this person either he's gone through what I've gone through mm. and has transcended it or this person is completely unaffected by whatever I'm going through so this is the right person I should go and ask mm. and you ask them how how they're doing things or how they react actually respond not react because mm. reacting is impulsive yeah is impulsive but when you respond you like okay 1 plus 1 okay let me do this mm. yeah yeah it's calculated Yeah so that's what yeah that's what I, li- I really liked what you said about the associ- association yeah mm. Okay uh before we get to the association there's mm-hmm. someone who's like stuck in the rut of things 
and then their mind they are so convinced i'm just better off not being in this world and these cases are just like going up from young people who have a lot of life in them which is very unfortunate but um just to touch on on the aspect of um suicide just a little bit as much as i i know how it feels i i can try and understand how it feels to feel like you're better off not being in this world but suicide really actually does not help you and does not help the people you leave behind so how it does not help you is that um these bodies we already know these bodies are not our own they are literally like on higher purchase we have these bodies for a certain while and then the creator will need the body back after a duration of time so if you're supposed to live for 60 years and um at 40 years you decide you know i'm going to off myself your body your soul or yeah your soul will continue to be without a body for the next 20 years because you didn't finish your time so <laughs> <laughs> basically you'll be a ghost <laughs> yes you yeah. will be a ghost and you're trying to satisfy your senses and it's going to be not possible because you're a ghost you cannot things are not tangible and so that will create suffering in that kind of body and um remember that the the thoughts that we have at the time of death will determine the next the next kind of body we have so it's it's recommended spiritually that at the time of death you should remember the holy names or god so that you can have a peaceful transit yeah. otherwise if you're so caught up in your mind you're so caught up in the problems you're so caught up with someone who you didn't like then you you sort of attract that kind of body mm-hmm. yeah so um just to say that um suicide really is not a cure i know at the at the moment it feels like the right thing but when you cross the border you will realize that's not it and then you've left your people with a lot of hurt they don't know what went wrong maybe they could have helped you and before that you'd said something like it's good to say if you need help if you really need help just speak out and that first comes by admitting that you're not okay admit it to yourself that yes i'm struggling and i'm not okay and then you can now find someone who you can talk to who will um hopefully give you the right guidance uh on yeah. on that on what you're going through so side note so you believe in ghosts yes i believe in ghosts <laughs> have you ever seen a ghost i've never seen a ghost because you can't see them with these eyes right can you miss j miss jana Oh Jonah. <laughs> well, he says he hasn't too. seen them. Yeah, okay, but yeah, but yeah, I've had various various hmm. uh, narrations about ghosts and I was always like, "Ah, hey, ghosts, really? Can you any Scooby Doo? It can't be ah. anything like ghosts." Hmm. But it, after like reading spiritual literature then it's very clear like you've explained. So in the previous episodes we already went through how the individual is the spirit and not the body so like in general the body is just like a covering yes. na kila kitu iko na expiry date mm. so kiamua to end your like to separate your soul from the body before it's time mm. there are rules of nature you, we're not just here doing whatever we like we like to think that but there are repercussions so if you do that you become an angry ghost they said but now mm. ground uh, maybe they feel like it's better I'd be a ghost uh, like whatever rather than be here so yes. for such a person like we've been we, uh, basically i've said that someone should try and practice to ignore or control the mind but you can't control the mind by force or like trying to you know wake up chini wafanya hivi so it's prescribed that um, one should engage the mind rather So you should not le- let your mind be idle. So mm-hmm. you engage your mind with positive things, with things which actually 
will encourage you to continue wanting to wake up uh, another day and another day another day right. like that so for 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 spiritual practitioners it's reading spiritual literature and doing practices such as meditation meditation has been studied very well and there is extensive knowledge out there on the net showing how it improves mental well-being mm. so my invitation to everyone is at least try meditation whatever form you're going to try just go on the on the youtubes go and search guided meditation and try it out for a week that's a challenge and you will definitely see a difference in your well-being mentally mm. afterwards so there are so many practices that we can do for like engaging the mind basically it means the mind ni kama mtoto kianza kupiga kelele you give it a toy <laughs> yeah distracted yeah you give it a toy something that it, mm. it will engage it it's not just like a killer time toy analia unampea chakula unampea right. chakula you're, you're feeding the dragon mm. so basically yeah there are so many practices out there the people who do yoga people <laughs> who uh, i don't know go out for hikes or ride bikes or whatever they do but generally speaking you don't you don't have to do something so extraneous just engage your mind don't let it be idle mm. feel it to the point where akuna space ya kitu ingine there's no ne- there's no space for any negativity mm. and uh, i think the rest is history right you know what i'm just thinking about is the things that actually stress us if we look at them whatever was stressing you five years ago is it stressing yeah, you now nah. <laughs> you, you look back at like it's it was thing. very very small it was very yeah. something very minute so um most of the times we feel like whatever you're dealing with it's such a huge thing yes, yeah. and then going forward you get a huge thing and you realize whatever you're stressed about was actually not even as big as you've made it as your mind made it yeah. so um when we're going through this life it's very important to remember and be aware that everything will pass everything will pass yeah. trust me everything will pass and the only reason why we have this life is to know ourselves spiritually is for spiritual endeavor so all these other things we really deal with are just like we should skip that ad and then we can continue to watch our movie which is self realization right mm-hmm. so uh yeah that is what i wanted to say that um there's always light at the end of the tunnel it doesn't matter how long that dark tunnel was there is still light everything will pass yeah literally i can't <laughs> I, i don't know how to you insist on you can't emphasize it yes. enough everything will pass including yeah. your body so uh, yeah just yeah, but like on that note actually there's a verse uh, in the bhagavad gita very famous book that describes that every distress every happiness it comes all from sense perception mm. so sense perception means that's however you're perceiving things according to your senses your working senses mm. so if something feels nice to you mm. like maybe you smell something and it's inviting mm. then it's happiness right but if you smell something and it, it's you don't like it then it's sadness but factually there all all of this is happening in your mind <laughs> yeah Mm. So it means that like if someone is able to tolerate both these happiness and distress mm. then they they come to a state of which we call bliss okay uh, of course this is very ideal it's very ideal but if one just has the the knowledge that okay all of this is coming from my senses yeah mm. so let me just let me accept things as they are and let me not dwell too much on it you know like acceptance is a huge part of it mm. resisting how things are happening a lot is usually another big cause of depression but if you can just accept and tolerate and like continue cultivating that knowledge that spiritual knowledge it really helps one because like you said the goal of life is spiritual uh, self realization yes. which is spiritual understanding yourself as mm. a spirit soul and yeah. connection to the supreme So if one doesn't have a goal in life then mm. any small inconvenience will completely blow your mind because there's nothing big you're moving towards <laughs> but if you have something like you really care about like for example like parents can sacrifice everything for their child because the child is much bigger than whatever inconvenience they'll go through mm. like oh, right. what 
work how many hours yeah mm-hmm. yani kitu kidogo yeah and they'll go through it yes. so similarly one can only understand the importance of this human life mm-hmm. by endeavoring spiritually and understanding out there is a big goal that mm-hmm. is there for me to achieve i'm not here by Can chance <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i think yeah th- that's basically it mm. okay now what you've brought us to is uh, you're telling us one of the ways we can stay above the chaos in our mind mm. right so um another one that's very practical is you you actually mentioned it but just to give you like a very very practical um solution of staying above it um cleanliness i know it's not anything that maybe that's major but personally this is from my experience to be in a clean space will greatly influence your mind yeah. i don't know if i'm the only one but i can only operate when things are neat and if i'm in a clean a- area mm. otherwise my mind is very juggled it's everywhere i can't Scrambled, think yeah. i can't find anything i I'm literally not <laughs> myself. So, yeah. and they say cleanliness is next to godliness. You know, mm. sometimes when you're really going through it and you feel like you're the you're in a dead end. When you're in a clean space, it's very easy to sort of call God's presence, however way you do it. Because God loves order. And then yeah. You can also take up meditation, there's yoga, you can do exercise, you can do a thing. If you're in the house and you literally don't leave the house so much, you can go outside and step on the grass, just bare feet. Go in nature, go to the forest, sit near a river. Yeah. And you know, these are actually practical solutions that can um allow you because now with working from home, a lot of people are staying home and um like even going out to get the sun can give you a change in can change yeah, your mood yeah 100% yeah <laughs> like today <laughs> as soon as the sun came out I was feeling better and then mm. I'm back to square one but yeah uh, we have to generate the sun from here from so within people <laughs> from within yeah so i don't know do you have anything else to add um Yes, 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 and that's very very important. Uh-huh. I don't know we c- we cannot go without saying about uh, talking yeah. about this to focus what you can control and uh being grateful. No, uh, yeah. Yes. So now in this um era of social media because I feel like a lot of these issues people have in their minds are stemming from the socials. You go especially on Instagram or wherever and do you find someone showing off whatever they have mm. just know that's a snap that's a photo of a whole lifetime you you're worried this person is on holiday you you want to be on holiday and they're on holiday sad but you don't know they're sad you've just seen they've posted a photo on the beach and they're looking very cute <laughs> but you don't know in that cuteness there's sadness and that's not shown showing on the photo So you're over there in your mind just wishing you could be this person. This person is there wishing they they wouldn't even be alive, right? Yeah. So we've really but it's yeah. twisted. Yeah. And then another thing, even if uh, that person is on holiday, happy or sad, it doesn't matter. Hey, manta. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yes. What matters is are you content? because only someone who is content can be happy only someone who is content can be satisfied mm. it doesn't matter how much wealth you have how beautiful you are if you're not content with what you have mm. the minute you see someone else's it will disturb your mind so much yes so uh, at least appreciate what you have like you said uh, mm. the art of appreciation you know yeah. you give thanks for what you have and you cherish it and also it doesn't hurt to appreciate someone else's beauty or the opulence like if you're seeing someone is enjoying themselves it's fine you appreciate it but you shouldn't start like reflecting or like me niko apa me boy ka like that yeah, yeah because everyone has their own life path and True. it's very unique like their own experiences yeah yes so we should um also um focus on what we can control sometimes we are we are yeah. thinking about something we can't control so now it's raining and you want it to be sunny mm-hmm. what to do just get your umbrella and leave the house yeah. right yeah 
yeah, uh, yeah. It said that we should focus. There's two circles. There's one circle which is this is you, and then outside is the sphere of influence, and mm. then outside of that is beyond your influence. Mm-hmm. So now you should just focus within like your the sphere circle. of influence. Yes. Yeah, like whatever you can change. Like you can change uh, how you're taking care of yourself. True. If you take care of yourself, you feel better about yourself. Mm-hmm. If you can focus on that, then that will create an impact on you. Mm-hmm. But now you can start uh, complaining about the economy and like becoming depressed about that mm-hmm. or something that's happening mm. where you have no control. So yes. yeah, I totally agree with you on that. And it's very it's very difficult because we like to complain. I don't know if it's something we pick up from other people as we grow <laughs> up because. I never see children complaining as much, but the more they hang out with older people, then they start. Uh, we infect them with yeah. our complaining, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So. That's important. Then, attitude of gratitude, very important. Let's thank God for what we have now, the health, the physical needs that He has provided us with. Trust me, there are a lot of people who are not in good health and they'd rather just have the health and no money. Mm. And then there are people who have all the money, but they don't have friends. They have a big house. They don't have anything except money. So <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Another thing I, I forgot to mention that is um, breath work <laughs> is very powerful. Mm. I don't know how I forgot it, but breath work, you can do it anywhere. Like, especially when, like, you're getting angry, you're getting agitated or something, you can literally calm yourself down mm. using breath work, you know? I yes. don't know. There's some people who breathe in and hold for four seconds and breathe out for five. Whatever they do, there's different kinds of breath work that bring different results. Uh, like, that really helps someone, like, whenever you're in a situation, or even if you're at home. Mm. Actually, yoga and breath work go together. So within yoga, there's meditation, there's physical, there's the physicality of it. So at least like if you're stressed also, you can, you can burn off that energy. And there's also breath work in yoga. So I highly recommend yoga for all of you viewers out there. And it's nothing religious. Please go and try it. Don't be too close minded about it. There are so many misconceptions about yoga. Mm. So yeah, breath work, yoga, and uh, anything else. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, please let us know um, on the comments how you deal with um, or how you improve your mental health. It will be very important um, to share that with us. So um, in conclusion, I feel like mm-hmm. we are so caught up in an illusion that we forget the reality. Mm-hmm. And the reality is what matters. And the reality is to focus on our purpose, why we are alive. Everything else will come. Yes, every problem has a root, it has a cause, and it has an end again. That's also something to remember. So we should um, not be so caught up in, uh, in our minds. This life is an adventure. Let's be a bit, let's not take ourselves too seriously because adults will just take themselves so seriously <laughs> and everything around them yeah even take their own kids so seriously and the kid was just trying to have a light time yeah so let's not um be too focused on what's not going right mm-hmm. you know because now let's be like what is it called like a rubber ball a rubber ball hey, so today i was speaking with my friend I was speaking with my friend Rosa yeah. and we were talking how um, we were saying how either you can choose to be a glass ball or a rubber ball. So when the glass ball touches the floor, it shatters, it breaks, you cannot put it back together. But with the rubber ball, even if you throw it on a window or on a wall, it will bounce back, right? So let's aspire to be like the rubber ball. It's not easy, but it is possible. So let's bounce back from whatever is putting us down. And then the more quick we are able to bounce back, the quickly we are also able to like move on to the next phase or the next chapter of our lives. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So 
we've spoken about many things but mental health is very vast we've only focused on depression mostly yeah yeah so yeah so we've discussed on how one can come out of depression how work one can control the mind so we've discussed that basically you can engage your mind that's the only that's the best way to control your mind not by trying to constrict it but rather by engaging it keeping it active whether it's mentally physically or whatever in this way when you do that then your mind has no time to deviate into other things yeah. actually there's a there's a, an, an, an analogy that my spiritual master usually uses he says that the mind is the, like the steering person so if you're driving mm-hmm. if you're driving a car you're very attentive like you're looking at the road you're not looking here and you're not looking mm-hmm. there is there any point that you'll be on the kind like oh dear mind now <laughs> do whatever you want <laughs> you know <laughs> we can't do that because the car will definitely crash mm. so that is our mind so what i was explaining earlier is that we need to be mindful of the mind and whatever we're putting in the mind mm. whatever thoughts that the mind is giving us we have to be mindful of it and we have to make a habit of practicing how to engage it positively jai so that it does not become our enemy so it said that for the one who has conquered the mind it is the greatest of friends, friends. and for that one who is not it's the greatest of enemies enemy true so i hope we've not left anything out even if we have <laughs> we will be back with um the next episode so we are noticing we are seeing all of you all the new subscribers and we are very humbled to have you subscribe to our channel please um keep subscribing and comment um on any yeah. topics you might want us to also uh discuss on this podcast otherwise we are very thankful and um we hope to see you on the next one jai hari bol hari krishna <laughs> Jamuna Tiravana Chari and so is going out to Shila Prabhupada to Guru Maharaj to all the creatures on the planet earth